Hey, what's going on, guys? Mike Glover here, actual. And I'm here on the tube with a new discovery. Somebody recently sent me a video of myself guarding the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier like a hundred years ago. Um, it, it, it's weird. It's weird, guys. It's so weird. It's weird seeing myself as a 18, 19 year old guarding the Tomb of the Unknowns because it seems like forever ago because it is. I'm old. Um, but seeing it brings back a lot of memories. And a lot of you don't even know what the Tomb of the Unknown Soldiers is. Like, you don't have no clue. But that's okay. That's part of this. I want to educate you on the significance of the tomb, but also show you a guard change and then walk you through some of the secrets behind the Tomb of the Unknowns. So here we go. I, this is me. Um, looking real suave. It looks like I'm on skis because I wear size 13 shoes and my feet look massive right there because they are. Wabam. Wabam. So the Tomb of the Unknowns is World War I, World War II, Korean, Vietnam unknowns that have been guarded by the army since I believe 1948. What you see me doing right there is going inside the guard shack and uh, a little secret about that guard shack. So that guard shack is where we have a phone that's landline connected to the basement of the quarters below the big mausoleum, which is the big building that you see behind uh, the Tomb of the Unknowns. Where everybody's standing, it's behind that. Inside that basement is a landline phone that rings if we have issues. Now, I don't know specifically why I went in the box. It couldn't. Have, it might not have been for a phone call. It could have been to wet my gloves. What I'm wearing is ceremonial gloves that are made of 100% cotton. And when they're real dry because of the heat, I can tell you right now, I know it's hot right here. I don't. It, it says June of 2000. So I was 19 years old here. And um, you better believe it's 100 degrees there. And especially off the plaza, which is called, um, all of that is called the plaza where I walk. It just radiates heat. I know it's hot because you can see the yellow stripe in my pants, my blues pants, which is made of 100% wool, by the way, is completely uh, jacked up. That's because of the heat. Now, what I do is I go inside that box, and inside the box, there's a little white um, cabinet. In that cabinet, there's a bottle of water, uh, a bottle of spray water. So I spray my gloves, especially prior to the guard change, because I want to be able to grip the rifle. Um, little secret. And there's also a mirror in there, so I could check myself to make sure I'm squared away before the guard change. I'm assuming that's what I did. So just a little trivia. All of the movements put the rifle in between myself um, and the tomb and the, and the crowd. So it's always going to be on the, as I'm walking to the right, the right side, as I'm walking to the left, the left side. So the rifle is always going to be between people and uh, the Tomb of the Unknowns. There's there's significance with the crypt. The World War One Unknown is underneath the crypt, the main crypt. In front of the crypt is World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. Um, they discovered who the Vietnam Unknown was. And they identified him as Major Michael Blassie, an Air Force pilot who was shot down in Vietnam. So in 1998, he was actually disinterred. His remains were disinterred, and he was buried in St. Louis, Missouri. And the crypt is actually empty. It, when you hear right now, you could hear a volley of three shots. That is a funeral for sure somewhere in Arlington National Cemetery. Hundreds of thousands of soldiers, sailors, marines, and airmen and women who are killed or who have passed are buried in Arlington Cemetery. So at this point, I am a guard at the Tomb of the Unknowns. Uh, you can see my badge, the big bright badge. 
It's the least awarded badge behind the astronaut's badge in the U.S. military. And it took me approximately nine months to earn the tomb identification badge. Here, I'm standing. I'm probably 19, 20 years old. I'm, I'm an E4, a specialist. I have my Ranger tab, my Airborne Wings, my Expert Infantry badge, and my tomb identification badge. As a young soldier in the Army, that's pretty squared away. I've done a lot of training up to this, this point in my short career. But right here, I could tell I'm getting ready and prepared for the guard change. This is Staff Sergeant Reed. He's my squad leader, and he's the commander of the relief, which means he's in charge of changing the guard. Um, good old Staff Sergeant Reed. Uh, Staff Sergeant Reed was a squared away guy, man. I, I love Staff Sergeant Reed. Infantrymen through and through, came out of the line units, Super long arms, um, had some quirky mannerisms, which it made him cool at, at the tomb. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? I am Staff Sergeant Reed of the 3rd Infantry Regiment, United, United States, States Army, Gar Commander oh, Commander of the Relief. It is request. And standing. Yeah, it's a requirement during the guard change that everybody's silent and standing. We'll, we'll stop a guard change in the middle of the guard change to um, uh, make sure that everybody's silent and standing. Um, he's saluting right now. Specialist Wells, George Wells, who's a buddy of mine on my relief, which is third relief. We're the shortest of the tomb guards. The average height for our relief is around six foot. I think to be in the old guard of the 3rd Infantry Regiment period as a male, you had to be 5'10 or above. Uh, I'm 6'1", uh, George is six foot. Um, Stassart Reed is six foot. Right now he's walking down to do the weapons inspection to inspect George's weapon to make sure he's squared away. All of this is uh, changed every 30 minutes during the summertime and every hour during the wintertime. Um, the hours change based on summer and winter, but it's guarded day on, day off, day on, day off, day on, four days off per relief. So after this relief, uh, after this cycle, I'd get a day off and then back to work the next day. And that was a year round cycle. So I knew my schedule uh, a year in advance. I knew if I was working Christmas, New Year's, whatever the holidays, uh, and it kind of was irrelevant to me because we were just doing our thing. So right now he's doing what's known as like the famous weapons inspection. Uh, Staff Sergeant Reed had a really good weapons inspection, real clean. Third relief was no, known as the flares. Like we did a lot of flare movements, like we did all these kind of things and Traditional tomb guards didn't like that, but I don't know. We thought we were sexy. We thought we were cool. So right now, he's inspecting the weapon. Um, it, right in this movement, he's about to hand the weapon off. He looks down, looks up, and then, wha-bam, and releases the, the gun into George's hands, meaning it's approved. He's going to look him up and down, sidestep him to the right, and then walk behind him and inspect him visually to the rear. It's it's crazy because I haven't done any of this in like 20 plus years. But if you put me back on that plaza right now, I could probably get through a guard change because it's I've done it so many times. So right now we're sunk and everything that's about to take place is choreographed between the three of us, two guards and one person changing the guard. And that's how it's going to go down so he's going to walk around he's going to give the command forward march i messed that up it's left shoulder then forward march so at the same time you can't tell because this is like an eight millimeter camera but everything we're doing is in sync and he's going to give us the forward march where we walk together
Now, the key component here is that I walk at a consistent pace. I don't want to walk fast. I don't want to walk slow. I just want to be slow and smooth so that these guys could read my cues. So if you notice, all three of our heel clicks were together and the same. Now what we're doing is passing on orders because of our general orders. This is something that takes place in all guard changes throughout the military. This should be good. Man. <laughs> to do that perfectly is very difficult. That takes years of practice. So up. We're going to flare pretty hard because we're third relief. And now we're going to pass on our orders. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Post and orders remain as directed. Look at that haircut. You can almost see my brain from the back of my head. That's how clean that is. So as a guard at the Team of the Unknowns, we got a haircut basically every day. So I, I basically, I, I mean, I, I had a little high and tight. Let's see how smooth this is. Wa-bam. Here he goes, the pop. Ooh, clean. It, just a little bit of sp disparity there. Tomb guards will be tearing people apart. Nice. Yeah, see, those little subtleties are things that we pay attention to. And if we screw that up, or if I had a new guy who screwed that up, it would not be a good day. And then we're going to pick up George and bam. And then he's basically on the mat now. I'm off the mat, and I have to clear my gun as a final rusting. Down, up, chamber, up. Showing him on a clear. Step. Nice. So me, Staff Sergeant Reed, and George had good chemistry. Like, you, you know kind of the chemistry you have with guys um, based on you being sunk. It's like doing CQB. It's like doing close quarters battle. When you're, when you're sunk and you could read each other, you, you get in the same rhythm of things. We worked really well together. Uh, we, we had our quirks. We had guys who were kind of displaced from that. Uh, what I winded up doing after this tour of duty is I winded up guarding the Tomb of the Unknowns for a little bit longer. And at the end of my career, before 9-11 of 2001, and, and I went into special operations, I actually trained tomb guards. I recruited them, I put them through a selection process, and then I got them ready to go on to their reliefs. And I, I would say I probably did two classes, me and a guy named Leslie Johnson, a big six foot five black dude who winded up going to seventh group. Uh, and I went up going to the third group. We are trainers together. It, pretty amazing time in my life, in my history of the military. I just wanted to share that with you because it's kind of cool reminiscing. What I'd like to see is if you guys got questions, because I'm going to do stories so the, the fo behind the photos, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the tomb. You guys might see an episode coming out soon. But if you got questions about the Tomb of the Unknowns, uh, any interest, leave your comments below. Make sure you hit the notification tab and make sure you certainly subscribe. Uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I, I certainly did. It was cool to reminisce. Uh, big honor of my lifetime guarding the Tomb of the Unknowns. And until next time, peace out, guys.